Hello YouTube, my name is Nero and today we have some very, very interesting news. It would appear that Activision does not care about all the dislikes on the Infinite Warfare reveal trailer. So this is all going to be coming from an article on Mashable. They actually were able to talk to Activision CEO Eric Hirschberg at E3 this year and they asked him about the dislikes on the trailer and the hate that Infinite Warfare has been getting so far. Eric would then go on to tell them, we're doing the same thing after the response as before, which is focusing on making a great game. At the end of the day, when we do that, we tend to make fans happy and win people over and continue to have the franchise flourish. Our previous most disliked trailer was the reveal trailer for Black Ops 2. That was the first time we brought the franchise into the future and that turned out to be one of our most successful games ever. Now this is actually true, at least according to some people. Now video game sales are very convoluted and very difficult to actually research. I've complained about this in the past, but according to NBD Group, which is a market research company that's been around since the 60s, Call of Duty is wildly successful. They ranked the best-selling video games since 1995, and nine of the top 20 are Call of Duty games, with the number one best-selling game since 1995 being the original Black Ops, number two being GTA V, which was also the biggest launch in, I think, game, like entertainment history. I think it had the biggest launch ever, but still, it didn't outsell the original Black Ops, and number three was Black Ops 2. Now, I don't know exactly how reliable all this information actually is, but it was sourced by Mashable, which is the publication that was interviewing Eric Hirschberg, so I assume there's at least some validity to it. Now, Eric went on to say in the interview, the franchise has never been stronger than it is right now in terms of the number of people we have online playing. Black Ops 3 is doing great. We managed to keep it relevant and fresh longer than many people thought we could. Now, I wish I knew this for a fact because Black Ops 3, of course, hides the player count and no Call of Duty game since Call of Duty Ghosts has actually had the player count publicly shown. But to close off the interview, Eric did mention all the negativity in regards to the trailer, but he said it was basically exclusive to that trailer. So in regards to the Infinite Warfare negativity, Eric would say, we didn't see that reaction on other platforms and in other metrics. We didn't see it in our pre-order momentum. We didn't see it even in the same exact trailer posting on other platforms like Facebook. It was unique. So according to Activision CEO Eric Hirschberg, they aren't paying too much attention to the hate on the trailer and they're conducting business as usual. According to him, the hate seems to be kind of exclusive to that reveal trailer and I can kind of see where he's coming from because it's a bit of a thing to be disliking that video right now. It's kind of a thing to be on the anti-Infinite Warfare bandwagon. I mean, heck, I've never seen so many so-called Battlefield fans in my life now suddenly. They're just coming out of the woodworks. But uh, I do see a lot of people definitely complaining that Activision and Infinity Ward are not listening to fans. And this is kind of going to be going along that same narrative. They're going to see this article and they're going to be thinking to themselves, oh, look at this. We're complaining. We're telling them that we don't like this setting. We don't like this game. They're not doing anything about it. They're not listening to the fans. But I feel as though people that feel that way are just simply misinformed as to how the system works. Maybe don't understand how video game development as a whole works. Call of Duty works on a three-year development cycle now. This means they've been working on Infinite Warfare since they released Ghosts. That's right, that means they've been working on this thing since 2013. The hate, quote-unquote, and this is just my opinion anyway, for the new movement system and the futuristic themes that we've seen in Call of Duty didn't even really start until about halfway through the Advanced Warfare life cycle, and by that point, Infinite Warfare was already a year and a half in, aka halfway finished, with its development. I mean, it's far too late for them to turn back now. It just It's impossible for them to go back and do that. Sure, they could try to take some fan feedback and try to uh, scrap everything together last second, but if you just think about the fact that they had to build the maps from the ground up, right, to work with this movement system, they can't just scrap the movement system and have the maps remain the same. They'd have to rework everything for that to actually work properly. If you think back to Advanced Warfare, where they had that playlist where you could actually play without exosuits, how terrible was that playlist? It was awful because the maps themselves were built to have exosuits, and so they were some of the worst maps in Call of Duty history if you weren't actually using an exosuit because that's what they were designed to have. They can't just go back and scrap everything. And there's one thing that they surely can't scrap. It's the theme. They can't suddenly, you know, put a World War II coat of paint on this game and call it a day. It, it just, it's something that they can't do anymore. They're far too late into the development cycle to go back and change any of those things. What's really odd about the entire system is that Black Ops 3 came out and it has a new movement system similar to Advanced Warfare but dumbed down a little bit. And people seem to really like it. It's a lot more controlled. And according to Eric in this interview, Black Ops 3 has more players actively playing it than any Call of Duty before it. 
which is a bit of a double standard if you ask me because everybody seems to hate Infinite Warfare because of its theme and its movement system, but the movement system is going to be the same as Black Ops 3, so it seems like a bit of a double standard if you ask me. I mean, it's perfectly fine if you don't like the setting. I think it's where a lot of the hate for Infinite Warfare is coming from. They're tired of futuristic stuff, and I completely agree. I've been talking about that since Advanced Warfare because during Advanced Warfare, there was like, uh, that was like when it was like really starting where every game seemed to have a futuristic theme. Like Civilization, for crying out loud, went to the moon. Like it's insane how many games went with that futuristic theme over the past couple of years. So I can definitely see where you guys are coming from when you say you're tired of a futuristic theme because I completely agree. And I would love nothing more than a Vietnam Call of Duty game or earlier, be it World War One, World War Two, or what have you. That's just, I would love nothing more than that. But just know there's nothing that we can change about this because the setting and the mechanics of the game were locked back in place back in 2013 and no amount of dislikes on a trailer or complaining on the internet are going to change that fact. There's just nothing that we can do about that. Now, all this feedback that COD fans have been giving, that can actually do some good and can actually influence future Call of Duty games. Right now, Sledgehammer is about a year and a half into their game's life cycle, so it's probably too late for them to change whatever it is they're working on. Of course, we have no idea what they're working on. It may be like an Advanced Warfare 2. It may be something completely different. Some people are wondering, myself included, if they're going to go back to World War 2 because Michael Condry's done a bunch of interviews where he's talked about World War 2 and how it just, it's a great narrative. It's a great setting for games and for, for media as a whole, be it games, movies, TV shows, what have you. And so it's possible that the next game from Sledgehammer is going to be a World War 2 game or something uh, not futuristic or modern. And I definitely think that all this feedback can definitely go towards Treyarch for sure. I mean, you think of Treyarch, they're only six, seven months into their game's development cycle right now. It's not very long, right? And so they could definitely take all this feedback, and if they planned on having another futuristic game, or a game with a new movement system, they may actually consider all the influence and all the stuff that people are putting out right now, all these suggestions, all this feedback that fans are giving, that they're tired of a futuristic theme, that they're tired of a new movement system. They could actually take all that feedback to heart, because their game is in its infantile stages right now. Like, they're probably in pre-production right now. They probably haven't even started working on stuff yet, because again, they're only six, seven months into the game's life cycle. But Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to conclude this video. I hope you guys all found it helpful in the forum. I just wanted to let you guys know about this article, give you guys some insight as to what they're thinking about over there at Activision from the head honcho himself, Eric Hirschberg, in his interview with Mashable. And of course, if you guys would like to go ahead and read the article for yourselves, there's going to be a link to my source down there in the video description. I always have my sources in the video description, as well as links to other useful information like my Twitter, my Facebook, a Twitch, even though I don't live stream. But all the information, all the links and stuff are down there in the video description of every single video. So be sure to check that frequently. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. If you did, drop me a rating. Hope you guys all have a wonderful day.